good everyone my name is graphics if you look at the front of your screen you will see a question there and a diagram and diagram is showing five forces that are acting at a point these forces are concurrent forces because they act at a point called the point of concurrence and they are also called coplanar force because they are all on the same plane so this force is acting at the point of concurrence are the 5 kN acting at an angle of 65 degree to the horizontal the 45 kN acting at an angle of 90 degree the 65 kilonewton acting at an angle of 28 degree to the horizontal. The 16 kilonewton acting at an angle of 55 degree to the vertical. And the last but not the least, the 28 kilonewton acting at an angle of 60 degree to the horizontal. Now we are told to use the method of resolu resolution of forces. To resolve all the inclined forces into x and y components in this process we are going to get the unknown force which is the resultant force and also get the direction of the unknown force right so let's start now the reason why we are doing all this is that when you talk about resolution of all forces is the resolving of inclined force into vertical and horizontal component because we know that if a force is not vertical then the force will be horizontal then where the force is now horizontal is now inclined or it's diagonal then you are going to resolve that force in order to get the x and the y component now let's kick into business now for the 5 kN force that is inclined at 65 degree to the horizontal it is acting in between the vertical and horizontal line let me say the north and the east because of this fact just bring out the north and the east out can you see that and the arrow is going outward so you put your arrow at both ends now for vertical component we use sine and for horizontal component we use cos because it is inclined to the horizontal because the angle is joined to the horizontal now the vertical will now give me 5 sine the angle which is 65 and the horizontal will give us 5 cos the angle which is 65 now you might be wondering why are we using 5 sine and what 5 cos I'm using just this first example for you but the rest I will not do that now let's join the 5 kN force to the horizontal this way now we now have x and y axis is that again x and y so let me bring it out to get a better illustration now this is the x and this is the y and this is the angle 40, 65 and this is the force 5 kN as the hypotenuse now if I consider cos 65 from the word ka, ka means adjacent over what hypotenuse. Now the adjacent here is the x axis, and the hypotenuse is the five kN, right? So when we do that, we have um, if I cross multiply to be my x equals to the five kN multiplied by what? by the cos 60 so that's why the force along x axis is given as what 5 cos 65 similarly if i look at sine of the angle which is 65 equals to we know sine from the word su meaning opposite over hypotenuse now the opposite here is y and the hypotenuse here is what is still 5 kN. So if I cross multiply, my y axis will now be um, 5 sine 65. Can you see that? 
this is how I come about this as a resulted um resolve force here. The vertical component, which is the y axis, is five sine sixty five, and the horizontal component, which is the x axis, which is along the x axis, is five cos sixty five. Is that okay? So I'll do that for every quadrant here that the force is situated. But I will not go through this long process. I will go into the short process here. Considering the 65 kilonewton here, I will bring out the, um, let's say this is the north and this is the west. So I'll bring out the north and west out this way, right? So since it's 28 degree is inclined to the horizontal line, the x axis, meaning that the vertical along the knot will be 65 sine 28 and along the west will be 65 cos 28 right the same process that applied to the other one also apply to this so this is what we have here now you were wondering i did not consider this 45 kilonewton why because already that's already made its own statement it's telling us that i am vertical right so we don't have to resolve it but the inclined force is telling us we are not vertical we are not horizontal so what are you so we have to just resolve this force now let's go to the next one which is the 16 kilonewton now I'll bring out let's say this is our south here and this is our west i'll bring out the south and the west out this way right when i bring it out now remember one thing it is inclined to the vertical 55 degree to the vertical so it is the angle is joining the y-axis because of that we are going to see the x-axis here is sine and the y-axis is what is cos so we'll see 16 sine 55 and 16 cos 65 so know those two points if it's inclined to the vertical the x-axis will be sine and the y-axis will be what cos but if it's inclined to the horizontal, the x axis will be cos and the y axis will be what sign, right? So the not sure is that where the angle is touching is always cos. So the angle 55 is touching the y, that is why the y is cos. And when the angle is touching the x, the x will be what cos. Let's put it that way. So I'm having this this way. Now let's move to the next one, which is the 28 kilonewton. Now note it, it is inclined to the horizontal. So we'll be having the x axis to be cos, so we have 28 cos 60, and the y axis to be sine, we have 28 sine 60. Is that the key? So this is what we have. So since you have resolved these forces, you don't have business with the inclined force anymore. What you'll be focusing on will be those resolve forces that you can see this, this this and this force this is what you're focusing on including the vertical force which is the 45 degree let's not forget about that is that okay so let us start so if you are finding this video helpful viewers please don't forget to like the video subscribe to this channel and also share the video you guys are the best we proceed considering the vertical component should be positive that is the upward force should be positive the downward force to be negative the force acting towards the right should be positive and the force acting towards the left should be negative right so resolving 5 kilonewton along x axis we see that 5 cos 65 right or if you look at it 45 kilonewton. This incline, this force here along the x axis is 5 cos 65, and along y axis, which is the force that is standing, is 5 sine 65, and this will give us 2.11 kilonewton and 4.53 kilonewton, respectively. This is what we have here, and we'll consider the 45 kilonewton. Along x axis, we say 45 cos 90, and that is 0 kilonewton. And along y axis, we say that what 45 sine 90, and that will give us 45 kilonewton. Now, the next one is 
we'll consider this 65 kN along x axis it is giving us 65 cos 28 right and along and that will give us minus 57.39 and along y axis to give us 65 sin 28 and that will give us 30.516 the next one here we have um, for the 16 kN along x axis is giving us 16 sin 55 which will give us minus 13.106 now you'll be wondering how did I get the minus because the 16 kN along x axis is facing backward it's going towards the what towards the west so that is negative since we've already said the force is acting towards the left is negative Sixteen kN along y axis and that will be 16 cos 55 which will give us nine minus 9.18 now along y axis is negative because it is facing downward sixteen kN is facing downward is that it? and let's consider the 28 kN along x axis it is 28 cos 60 and that is 14 kN it is going towards the right but along y axis it is 28 sine 60 it's going downward so it will be what negative so we have negative 24.24 24.25 kilonewton so this is what we have here i will together so the next step here is we should bring all the x forces along uh, acting along x axis together i'll bring all the forces acting along y axis together so i'll write it this way the summation of all forces acting along the x axis which is the horizontal component give it that this symbol here is equals to so bring all the forces in along x axis so we have 2.11 minus 57.39 minus 13.10 plus 14 and that's going to give us minus 54.38 kilonewton is that okay that is for summation of h Similarly, we are going to say summation of all the forces acting along y axis, which is the vertical component, the force standing. So we say summation of V, and that will be giving us we have the 4.532 plus 30.52 minus 9.18 minus 24.25 plus 45, and that will give us. 46.62 kilonewton right so this is the, the total vertical forces and the total horizontal forces that we have here so therefore the unknown force which is our resultant force is giving us the summation of the horizontal component square plus the summation of the vertical component square and this will give us for the summation of horizontal component, we have minus 54.384 all square plus the summation of vertical component is giving us 46.62 all square. And this will now give us the square root of 2957.62 plus 2173.61. And what we have here when you square each of these. Um, Forces here. Now, when you add both of them, forget about the negative sign because of there's a power there. So when you have a square as a power or an even number as a power, the negative is irrelevant at that moment. Now, e equals to if you add both of them, you're having five one three one point two three. So if you find the square root of five one three one point two three, you'll be having seventy one point six three kilonewton. Oh dear. So now we have successfully calculated the unknown force, which is the resultant force. Right? And the problem, the question is, what is the resultant force? The resultant force is a single force that can replace two or more forces and still produce the same effect as those forces. Now, this single force that we have to be 71.63 is a single force that I replaced the five forces there, that I replaced the five kilonewton. 45 kN, 65 kN, 16 kN, and 20 kN respectively, which is the force here. Now let's look at the direction. Where will this force be facing? Now, the direction or the sense is giving us the tan theta 
of when you say tan theta means from the trigonometric function we say toi which is opposite over what adjacent so my tan theta will now give me the opposite which is the vertical component divided by the adjacent which is the what the horizontal component right and that will give us 46.62 divided by 54.38 and that will give us 0 0.857 so if I take my tan to the other side, my theta will now give me tan inverse of 0 0.857 degree. So this will give me my tan theta will give me what? My theta will give me 40.6 degree. So that is the direction or the sense of the resultant force. So viewers, if you have actually find this video helpful, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and also share with friends. Thanks for watching.